How y'all doing, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. And today, super excited. As you know, football season is approaching, and we have one of the NFL's best safeties, one of the most elite safeties, probably going on the past decade right now. Yeah. Um, he is now a safety for the Indianapolis Colts. He's a Super Bowl champion. Um, Ryan McLeod, welcome to Community Voices, man. How you doing? I'm doing well, my brother. I appreciate you having me on today. Of course. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. I know with, with training and everything going on, you're probably moving around nonstop, always doing something. So I appreciate you cutting out some time of the day for us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah, it's that time of the year, uh, getting ready for training camp and getting ready for the big move. Uh, so schedule's a, a little hectic, but uh, we're getting through it and we're surviving. Awesome. Love it. Love it. And for me personally, I know you said schedule's a bit hectic and I like to start things off this way. I know we always ask how we're, how we're doing. It's like a, you know, automatic response, but I like to really check in. Mental health to me is really important these days. So I like to check in on our mental health. So I guess when I, uh, I know I said, how are you doing, but how are you feeling mentally? You know, how, how's your headspace going? I know all those things going on and maybe kind of hard to check in with yourself, but how are you feeling mentally too? I'm very, uh, I'm in a very good place uh, right now mentally. Uh, and that's all good credit to uh, just came off an amazing uh, trip with my wife, our anniversary trip. Uh, just really gave us some time to um, step away for a little bit, recalibrate, uh, spend some quality time with one another, kind of disconnect from the world. Uh, you know, the past few months have been very, um, I guess, fast for us, like a fast pace of living just everything that we kind of had on our plates, uh, adjusting to this, this new change, you know, going to a whole new team, uh, everything that we're doing with our foundation and, and other um, endeavors I have going on. So it, it came at a very great time. And now I'm getting ready to, you know, step into camp where the mental needs to be clear. Uh, I, like I need to go in with a, a, a great head space and just ready to go out there uh, and compete, man, and, and and bring my talents to to a new team. Uh, just really looking forward to the season. But uh, mentally, I, I'm in a very great place. Good, good. That's what I love to hear. Yeah, like I said, I know it's easy when you're so busy with things. It's hard. Sometimes it's easy to be like, how am I feeling? And then, like, you notice it when you, you know, you get upset over something. You're like, why am I so upset? And it's like, oh, I haven't taken time for, like, for to self. Control. You're like, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So that's, that's really good to hear. And happy late anniversary. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. Going on year three uh nice and if you're clock year three so it's uh every year man it's a, it's a new challenge but uh the love continues to grow which is most important and you know that's my best friend so love it love it i'm, I'm going next i think in two weeks is a year myself my first my first year getting married okay. so congrats yeah. year, that's, that's huge the goal. that's <laughs> huge <laughs> it really is big marriage is marriage is underrated and it's a lot of work but that's a whole nother tell you. episode for another day yes <laughs> But I love it. It's beautiful. Um, speaking of beautiful, honestly, you, I, said, I mentioned it earlier. You've been in, you've been elite in your position for the past ten years. We're going on your eleventh season. Like, in, in in any sport, it's hard to to stay. To sometimes it's hard to stay. You know what I mean? To always kind of have you have to really like re re show people your value every year and why you should yeah. be there and why you're elite and why you have a presence on a team. And you've done that consistently. Can you kind of speak to just how that journey has been for you. I know it speaks to your work ethic and your skills, but what has that journey been like as we head into your 11th year, a new team, all this, all this, you know, new experience, a whole new change for you. Can you kind of speak to that longevity in your career? Yeah, my journey has honestly been a blessing uh, from when I entered the league in 2012, being undrafted to now stepping into year 11 and, and playing a full decade, you know, you spoke about some of those things and the reasons why people make it this long. And it's hard to stay in. It's hard to get in, but it's even harder to stay in. And so when I look at my career up to this point, you know, I always, you know, I beat the odds tremendously uh, from the moment I stepped in as an undrafted rookie. It's hard to make a team. Uh, some people are placed on the practice squad. I was fortunate enough to be a part of the 53 and stayed on the 53. And then now my following year, I stepped into a starter position and I haven't left that seat. And, you know, I had a conversation with my younger brother literally yesterday about, he was super excited about now starting, you know, getting his first opportunity to start. And I said, look, you know, that's great, but it's going to be even harder to stay in that seat because people want 
your position. And we know this, this, this game, and you talked about it, you have to reset every single year. You, you have to have that same hungry, um, want to prove myself uh, mentality, or else if you don't, you're going to face complacency. And that's the quickest way out. When you think you've arrived, you think you've made it. And it's a humbling game. Yeah. And it humbles you from week to week, not just year to year, from week to week. So one of the things that I that I really try to focus on is, is just staying present. And I've been throughout my career and my, my family would tell you this. I, I don't read articles, good or bad, about myself because I hate the, that feeling, you know, mm-hmm. of, wow, I get too high on myself or, wow, they said something negative, I get too low. And it's a game where you need confidence, but it's also – important for me to just stay level-minded and you know some of the the things I think I credit to me playing in 11 years is yes one my work ethic I think that's very important like doing things that most you know to even get to this level people say that but when you to stay here for 11 years you have to do things that are just unordinary or just extraordinary right uncommon and um, I really credit myself on that. A lot of stuff that I do off the season, but also in season, that's allowed me to and, and stay in this this role. I think another thing is just being like a true professional uh, in every single way. The way I entered the building, one of my coaches, Greg Williams, he always told me this: like every day is an interview, and you should treat it as such. And it's truly a, a job. It's you know, this is these, this is our career. And so you can't take it for granted uh, from everywhere, from preparation to having a, a set regimen and schedule, eating habits. All of that plays a role in longevity. Right. And then I think overall, just consistency as well. And 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 how I uh, my technique uh, on the field to things I do off the field, because um, I think it, any great player, there has to be consistency uh, there. And I think finally, I would say, really just learning from other guys, uh, other pros, seeing how they how they approach the game, how they've been able to make it to this point. I've been fortunate to be in a lot of great locker rooms with a lot of great players, starting off in St. Louis with Cortland Finnegan, Quinn Michael, Chris Long to pivot into Philly where I was with Malcolm uh, Jenkins and uh, Darren Sproles, Brent Selig, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's, yeah. a, it's a room full of like guys who have proven themselves and Hall of Famers, you know, some of these, yeah. some of these guys, honestly. And so, man, I, I, I compile all of those sorts of things. And I think that's why I've been able to last and play as effectively as I have um, and many people, when they come across me, they would never would have thought like I was, I would have been undrafted. But you know, here I am today. I always enjoy those stories of people who have taken the the, the hard route, you know, to struggle and and face adversity. Like I've I've faced everything you can in this league at this point in time, and I think that's also made me who I am. And I have a lot of scars, right? And and those scars have made me stronger to these to this day. I've been able to stitch them up and I've been able to move on, but take something and learn something from it to prepare me for the next. And so um I'm proud, man. It's like it's it's honestly a blessing and I'm gonna continue to uh play as long as God willing. <laughs> you Amen. know, more importantly, man, because it, it's a lot of mileage on, on the body. I feel it 100 percent And I just probably said, like it's NFL. I mean, I know there's a lot of sports, but I know that like NFL is one of the most like challenging and physical to, to your body. You know what I'm saying? The, the the physicality that it takes every day. So, like I said, to that's always kind of like the, the greats like Kobe and LeBron, and you kind of see how you know they were so good, so elite, and like they kind of changed their game, not because they're trying to fit in with the league, but it's like, how do I let my body last even longer because the older I get the body change like you were saying so yes that's it. it's another another way just another brilliant piece of your career and kind of like I'm a big fan of J. Cole but I know he said one of his lines like there's beauty in the struggle and I think that's 100% the thing that journey is people always see the end product but a lot of the lessons are in the attention to the detail the journey that it took to get there so I, I 100% understand that so that's, that's beautiful that's awesome and I know that you mentioned advers- adversity and to, correct me if I'm wrong in the 2018 season I think in the third game against 
skip the calls. You tore your MCL, correct? You're on injured reserve. Uh, so I, I actually tore my ACL and MCL uh, oh. that year. Yeah, yeah. So it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't pretty. Uh, good friend of mine, my, you know, my my, my boy, uh, Green Goblin, Jalen Mills, friend, <laughs> friendly fire. Uh, yeah. you know, he was doing his job, going to hit uh, the running back and actually clip my knee instead. So uh, that's how that that's how that happened. But yeah. Now I turned my I turned my ACL. I love that. Thank God I didn't tear my MCL. But I turned my ACL. Shit is not fun. Not fun at all. But no. I have to. That was the same season that the Eagles won the Super Bowl as well. So I know that getting a ring. I'm assuming that getting a ring that season was kind of bittersweet. Um, yeah. What? What? Can you kind of explain to me how it felt to get to like finally get a ring? But then like how it felt in that moment, but also compared to how you look back at it. You know what I mean? Like looking back at that moment and kind of appreciating it that way compared to how you may have looked at it in that moment. Yeah. I, uh, so winning the Super Bowl was a, a surreal feeling. Uh, it really felt like a, a dream. And, you know, you talked about the injury. The injury happened the year after, you know, oh, okay. we won the Super Bowl. So gotcha. we, you know, I'm coming off this high, right? And, mm -hmm. and everything's feeling great. And I think for us as a team, we really wanted to put ourselves in a position where we were not satisfied with just one ring. Uh, right. That was a mentality that all of us had. We were very hungry for another. And it hurt the fact that I was the first individual of that team to um, be removed with a season in the injury. And so, that was devastating in itself, but to rewind and go back to the season before, we mm -hmm. faced a lot of adversity th throughout that season, uh, specifically injuries with key players, um, you know, speaking of Carson Wentz being one, Darren Sproles, Jason Peters, uh, Chris Maragos, who was a, a stout special teams uh, veteran player for us, and Jordan Hicks, who was our starting Mike linebacker. So we we had to really rely on a lot of individuals and depth was really helpful for us that year. And that was, I think it was really credit to just the mindset that we had as a team and preparation for our coaches. And I think that year alone was just like a great uh, analogy of just how life operates. Yeah. You know, like, you don't you don't go through life without any same thing we just talked about any struggle any mm -hmm. challenges uh adversity everything is all about how you respond and it's about having the right attitude uh in that moment and it's also learning something from it and i think for us that season we really we responded well we had the right attitude we had the right approach that's because of the leaders that we had on our team but even more so it was the trust that we built in one another that allowed us to be able to continue to perform at that level and now win a championship. So, you know, and, and then it came down to faith. You know, we really stood on that. Uh, that was one thing in Philly, man, that just having that brotherhood, but also uh, a lot of men of faith were on that team and we really connected and rallied behind that. And you don't, experience what we what we went through that year without having that belief and that faith and that trust all those things showed um in the moment when it mattered the most at the highest uh going against tom brady patriots the brady belichick connect uh you know what i'm saying who had a, a dynamic um uh time together i would say and they don't lose often in that moment so for <laughs> us to go there, man, and, and do what we did for the city was was special. Uh, and obviously that's something that can never be taken away. That's that's forever. That banner will stay in the link until, you know what I'm saying, until football ends. And yep, yep. there's been a lot of great teams who have put on the Eagles uniform. Uh, and I, But I'm proud to be a part of that, that team, that band of brothers who were able to uh, go out and get it done when everybody said otherwise, because nobody had us on their, on, a, on their radar. Um, and so every time I look at the ring, man, I just really reflect on the memories that were, were formed, uh, the brotherhoods that were, 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 were formed. Uh, and I think about the work 
and I think about what it took to win. Um, and you know, you look at the goals, the what were your 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 values, what was your approach, what was your mentality like, all of that. And you know, that's something that now you you have that recipe that you now stick to and know what it takes and what it should look like. So uh, I'm forever grateful, man, and 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 hopefully I can you know win another one uh, before my before my. Uh, uh, journey ends 100 percent, 100 percent, and like you know like you said you get that recipe and then you because the game is forever changing you also like take that recipe and you build on top of it because it's forever changing and that faith piece is really is really important too you know what i mean having that faith because when you when you're when your faith is that solid when it's that concrete really the only like really everything that kind of happens that will make you question your faith is that is a reminder of like how much faith you have like oh someone so got injured like damn that's crazy but you know, how do you, is your faith still there? How strong is your faith? Like every kind yes. of adversary, every kind of problem, this question is like, how strong is it? When you look at it that way and you have that perspective, I mean, you literally can't, like, what can't you do? You know what I mean? Yes. So that's, yeah. That's, yeah. Still, that's, that's something that's powerful. Exactly. Powerful, so anybody man, listening needs to put that to their life. Like that is a key to life. If you have that faith and it's concrete, everything that happens is just a test of the faith, not like a, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I, I should lose it. So that's, that's key. I love that. That's 100% key. So now we talked about it earlier. Before I get into the foundation, one thing we talked about was the Colts. You know, going into this new season, a lot of change, new season, new energy, new team. But you come into this experience with, I mean, you come into this uh, to this year with a bunch of experience. Like I said, Super Bowl championships, adversary with injuries, a lot of knowledge from some of the greats. You're, you know, you're better yourself now too. What are you hoping to bring to this team? Um, and what is like your goal individually? I know the goal is always to win a ring for, you know, just the whole franchise, but what is kind of your goal individually? And then what are you looking to bring to the team with this kind of new experience? Uh, to be honest, uh, for myself personally, I don't necessarily have a true goal uh, for myself outside of being available for my team. Mm -hmm finishing a year uh, injury free uh, because I feel like when I'm healthy is when I'm at my best. Right. When I'm available, I'm able to help my team win games, uh, make plays. And I just feel as though like I'm one of the best when I'm truly at my best, I'm my best self and best version of myself. And that's when I'm healthy. And that's been a struggle for me over the past couple of years because of the injuries that I face. So really not looking into the stats necessarily this year for myself, because I believe if that happens, the stats will will naturally come. Right, um, right. And I don't want to focus on that. I want to focus on how making sure that I'm I'm durable and I'm available. And so that will allow, that will align with everything else that I want for myself. I do want an all pro. I do want a pro bowl because uh, I'm hungry for that. And I do want, you know, to help my team reach a championship. Um, that is a, a, a team goal of ours, right? And that's important, but you can't do any of those things if you aren't available. Uh, that's first and foremost. So taking less of the like pressure off myself and just having fun, staying in the moment, being present, uh, to be honest. I think when it comes to me as a leader, uh, some of the things that obviously, um, I think me just being myself, uh, first and foremost, doing what I've always done and, and really just being a man who leads by example, um, showing how to be a pro, uh, what it takes, the approach that it takes to win a championship, uh, to uh, appear in playoffs consistently, to win a division, uh, to last as long as I have. I think all of that is just my daily approach and my daily grind. And I think I've uh, shown that early on, but it's one thing to do it early, you know, when everybody's excited and you come to a team, but it's one thing to see how consistent a guy is from the, the minute he his touches you know that building to the last day whether you're winning or whether you're losing right and right. that's what i pride myself on is being that same player regardless of what's happening uh because i know the results will happen uh, i think 
overall, just being a team player, uh, that's, you know, that's huge for me showing that uh, to younger guys. Cause I think everybody comes in with a certain mindset on, on where they think they should be. Mm-hmm. Um, and you look at some of the greatest teams, even looking at the, the last dance, right. And, and their approach and how everybody had a role and they embraced their role and they perfected it. Right. And so you have selfless men on that team. And when you have that, it's special because you know that people are truly genuine and want to see each other do well and are there just for the common goal. So I think that's huge. And you talked about it, you know, me being a vet, seeing a lot, you know, so sharing any information that I have, obviously uh, giving game back to, to uh, guys that, that, that want it or need it uh provide advice and and i think more importantly just hold everybody to the standard um i think that's the hardest part in in leadership is keep holding guys accountable uh keeping them uh aligned to the mission at hand and 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 holding them to that standard that everybody has set out um throughout the season because there's going to be ups and downs and times where you know guys want to pivot and go a different direction or think about more self and how do you make sure that you realign and keep guys assured that what they're doing is right and on course and back to the faith thing that we talked about. Uh, I think that's, that's big in, in building that camaraderie and trust and belief in one another. Uh, because when you have that, uh, nothing can really uh, penetrate, right. Or infiltrate, infiltrate that. So uh, I think me that that's kind of sums it up as I, go into now this training camp and, and prepare for this upcoming season. Love it, man. When you, when you, and honestly, when you, when I think about everything that you just said and like, like just the overall encompassing ideas of it too, there's like no way that you don't have, like you have such a strong impact with this team. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're going to, like, there's just going to be so much that you bring to the team aside from your skills. And I, I, I've been kind of echoing that this whole, this whole episode, but the one thing a lot of people, uh, I think people sh- should know more of too is that your impact on the field and in the locker room is just as strong off, off the field. And yeah. what I mean by that, I'm talking about you can see it on a shirt, change our future. The foundation between the a foundation that was started by you and your wife. For people who aren't as familiar, kind of speak to what change our future is and the mission and kind of what it's become today, if you don't mind. Also, real quick, sorry, before I let you jump my question, we're also donating 10K to change our future because we believe in the work they do. We see how it changes lives, puts smiles on kids' faces. And really, you know, a lot of people, I know there's so many foundations things like that, but people don't understand the impact that that has on kids, the impact that has on community. It is something that changes people's lives, saves people's lives, changes people's future and their entire trajectory. So the work that, that he does, the work that your organization does should never go unstated and from for me personally, big applause to what you do. I try to do it individually, being able to get people together. Aside from like your life, you know, you have to deal with your you know, football career. You have to deal with your family. It's a lot to deal with. So to be able to do that, balance it, and continue to impact the people who you may not even know is a beautiful thing. So I had to say that real quick. But yes, change our future. Who is it? The mission. Let people know. Yeah. So change our future. Uh, we started actually in 2020. Uh, my wife and I. Uh, Erica McLeod, we went to the University of Virginia, uh, married for three years. We, we just kind of had a, a vision. And one thing that we shared was just this passion and love for kids. And when we hit it in 2020, when we formed the foundation, obviously COVID uh, was at large and it happened during this the pandemic. So we really just hit the ground running, looking to just serve the community in any way possible. It really wasn't mission focused, but obviously there was a lot of need and there was ability to serve people. And so we did everything from food insecurities to family support, uh, to supporting frontline workers, uh, providing scholarships, partnered with Comcast as all the kids were obviously virtual for school, making sure that they had internet, um, and then also the mental health component, uh, we held like a, a very um, personal like conversation with um, several adults and children. And so that was powerful. And then, you know, now we shifted into 2021 
and now to this present day and we've now gotten back to our mission at hand you know which has been this youth development organization uh really striving to eliminate the barriers that exist for kids in underserved communities uh recognizing the limited amount of opportunities resources and access um and at cof we're looking to now close that gap that exists for these young people provide them with the support the hope um and empower each kid and so uh for us we believe those areas that we try to focus on in our program is through education mentorship uh community uh and also leadership programs gives us the best opportunity to place kids on a pathway for success and there are obviously a lot of issues that um are now in the educational system that we have identified and i think we know um, and a lot has to do unfortunately with education being uh determined by your neighborhood and i think for us being both uh, African American individuals, we realize that a lot of that support is not being poured back into the communities that look like us in those uh, underserved areas. So uh, we want to be able to now level the playing field in a sense. We want to be able to step in and allow those kids to feel and know that they matter, that they're valued, that their education is important, and that that is a very powerful tool for for success in america we know that and we're looking to push those sorts of programs back into those communities uh which is important we're we're obviously looking to lean on our educators you know our educators aren't being supported uh, uh appropriately either you, you know unfortunately and so they have to feel value because they do so much for these children they're spending the time often they are are um are often put in a role where they're more than just uh someone who who teaches but they they mentor right they discipline uh they they play a lot of different hats for these kids and so it's important for us to put our arms also around them uh as cof to make sure that they know that we hear you we understand that you guys are the true game changers. You're the ones who are rooted in the classrooms and everything starts with you. And so uh, we've made a sort of effort to make them make sure that we acknowledge them and feel appreciated. I think, you know, one other thing that uh, we're really uh, proud about talking about the mentorship aspect and we're starting our next man up program this upcoming school year uh, here in Philadelphia at Parkway Northwest. and honestly you know our, our young black males need you know us right now uh they need direction support uh we want them to understand that their lives matter you know balance is at an all-time high right now but how do we prevent that uh what are pre preventative steps and we feel like this is a way to do that uh, next man up program is really aiming to really break down those systematic gaps that have existed um, and those stigmas that are placed on us as black males and we're trying to do that by teaching and equipping a lot of these uh young black students with the necessarily tools right um and we're doing that in a workshop format which is very powerful it's, it's going to be geared to a subject per month that we're going to take them through all throughout the year covering a wide range of, of topics, everything from mental health to life choices to human behavior, because let's be real, a lot of every single day we wake up, we're faced with decisions. Facts. And our decisions, you and our decisions have allowed us to sit here today, right? Not saying we made every perfect decision or every perfect choice, right? But more times than not, it was the right one that allowed us to be here sitting in these seats. And it's unfortunate for so many others that, that a lot of a lot of us black males, we don't necessarily respond, we react. Mm -hmm. And how do we now kind of walk them through and, and, and allow them to learn 
unfortunately, maybe from some prior mistakes that, that were made and do case studies, right? And then really dive into the financial literacy piece, uh, teaching them about different investing opportunities, because that's that access that we talked about. That's that knowledge that as a community, we don't have. I've learned a lot because of the position I'm in today, but right. I want to be able to now take what I've learned in like these pet in this decade to now pour back into you know the next generation. And so um, we're we're talking about philanthropy. And and when you really think about it, it's really just we're trying to now mold these these young black men into well-rounded gentlemen for them to be able to pass the torch to the next generation because it can't it can't just end with you and I right on this call it has to continue and when we when I think about you know our foundation as a whole like that is our purpose it's developing these kids to step into leadership roles to step into uh, anything they can imagine and 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 allowing them to know that they are confident enough and that they are enough in who they are but it's all about someone telling them someone supporting them whether it's for a day or it's for a year um and them now equipping them with certain tools that they may not have had beforehand to be able to now navigate throughout life and it's so fulfilling and rewarding. Uh, you know, we just finished our Youth Leadership Summit. My wife did an incredible job at, at hosting that. I really sat back <laughs> and let her and let her, uh, you know, what I'm saying do her thing. Uh, my camp, I'm, I'm very hands on, but she was that was her camp in a sense. And it was uh, a day full of uh, taking a group of of African-American kids, uh, black and brown students, both uh, girls and boys, bringing them together, taking them through a workshop series and really giving them the confidence they need uh, to now try to prepare themselves and envision themselves in uh, the, the workforce space, right? And we know representation is, is lacking that diversity and inclusion in, in certain jobs. But we want them to know and wanted them to know and, and teach them how to uh, prep from resume building to interviewing uh, to uh, confidence to what does it mean to be a leader? And you want to see us in those leadership roles. And I and I and I feel as though that in itself um, is going to be game changing for a lot of these kids. Um, and I'm looking forward to that moving forward. But to sum it up, man, you know, COF, uh, we're doing a lot of amazing work. Uh, it's exciting that we've only uh, existed for this short span of time of two years. Uh, but, you know, thank you to everybody who supported us up to this far for, um, you know, funding us and allowing us to build out uh, these amazing programs and looking forward to uh, impacting uh, so many more lives uh, as we continue to move forward. Man, man, that's moving. That's powerful. I, I love it, man. I know we got to get ready to wrap things up here too, but I, I, Oh yeah, I see that. I see that too. Yeah. And the one came up. I said, "Oh, I said, oh <laughs> no, you're totally good." I was like, oh, "He he doing my job for me." All the questions I was going, he he doing it for me. But no, no, honestly, all, all seriousness, I know we only have a couple of minutes. Love that. That's that's like super moving. And I, the reason why I say it's so important too, is just for people listening, you know, and also it's, it's like really that COF embodies, you know, what, what Community Voices is trying to push and support too. And I just want to say like with people on your level, you know, your NFL career and things like that. Always remember people too, that you can have that same change in your community, no matter what your career, no matter what your status is. Cause we, you know, the reason we're able to do these things is because of what we've learned, our experiences, our experiences as human beings, our experiences as black men, as black women. So we're able to take those things, learn from our mistakes, we learn from our right decisions and impact communities. So I think no matter where you are, from your level to my level to anybody's level, you can still have that same impact. You can still help people. You can still help them make the right choices because every day somebody is watching us. Somebody's watching the move we make, the things we do, and that could change somebody's life. That could save somebody's life. You don't know what it could do. So yes. once again, it's beautiful that you have something like that and you're able to impact community on such a scale, you and your wife as well. It's just a beautiful thing to be able to speak to Black men, to be able to speak to Black women, just to be able to speak to the youth and underserved community as a whole. So I have to just say I 100% appreciate the work that y'all do. I love it. And I appreciate you 
cutting our time again to join us here for Community Voices. I'm watching you this season. I, our, our other office, I'm in the Boulder office. Our other office is in Indy. I'm hoping I can go catch a game. Yeah, like, and got to pull up. A hundred percent. But I, like I said, super excited for you. Super excited for your new season. And I just appreciate you. And do not stop. Please do not stop doing that work. That is God's work. And I love to see it, man. So thank you. Uh, thank you so much, boss. I appreciate the time, man. A hundred percent. So appreciate y'all tuning in for another episode of Community Voices. And we will see y'all next time. Peace.